Remember that Wii robot event when Tesla first showed off Optimus? Oh, yeah. Seeing that humanoid robot actually walking around, waving, it felt like, I don't know, science fiction just went, bam, right into real life. Yeah, it was definitely one of those moments like, is this really happening? You're right, though. It's easy to get caught up in that initial whoa factor and not see the bigger picture. For sure. I mean, a robot that can empty the dishwasher, I'd take two. But all kidding aside, this technology, it's not just about making our lives easier, right? Yeah. What our sources are pointing at is, well, Optimus could change everything. How we live, the work we do, heck, even how we see ourselves as humans in the first place. Heavy stuff. So, ready to do this deep dive. Absolutely. Let's break down what makes Optimus tick and why everyone's suddenly an armchair roboticist. Okay, so, Optimus. Bottom line. It's a humanoid robot designed by Tesla. But that humanoid part is key here. We're not talking about those giant robotic arms you see bolted down on factory floors. This is different. This machine is meant to move around our world just like we do, interacting with stuff in a very human-like way. And a big part of how it does that is by leveraging what Tesla already excels at. I'm talking about the batteries, the camera systems, even those onboard computers that are the brains behind their self-driving cars, they're all part of Optimus. Right, those onboard computers, they're crucial. This thing isn't beaming data up to the cloud for processing like some AI systems. Optimus is making decisions in real time using something called neural networks. Great. Again, neural networks, they're basically these complex systems that allow AI to actually learn and adapt on the fly. Think of them like Optimus's brain. It's always taking in information from everything around it, constantly learning. That's why Optimus can react so quickly and so smoothly no matter what's happening. So it's like, yeah. instead of having to call a friend every time you get stuck, they're already right there with you figuring out the problem. You got it. Now imagine that brain power paired with, get this, 2D cameras. 2D cameras. Wait, like what's in our phones? That doesn't sound super high tech for something as advanced as Optimus. That's the beauty of it. Think about this GPS. Useless indoors, right? And most robots, they need all of these intricate systems to map out their surroundings. But us humans, we navigate a pretty complex world with just two eyes that see in good old 2D. Tesla took that simple but elegant idea from us and applied it to Optimus. So by using technology that's already everywhere, they may have solved one of the biggest problems in robotics, how to make something that can actually function in our messy, totally unpredictable human world. Exactly. And it's not just about dodging obstacles. Our sources say Optimus can handle stairs, uneven terrain, stuff most robots would just fall flat on their faces trying. Which, now that you mention it, is mind-blowing when you really think about it. Have you ever seen a robot successfully climb a flight of stairs? It's usually a recipe for disaster, or at least a viral video. It's a massive achievement, and it all comes back to this clever use of tech that's actually pretty straightforward. But here's where it gets even more interesting. These Optimus robots, they're designed to share what they learn. Hold on, like some kind of hive mind thing, but for robots. Not a hive mind exactly, but close. Every time one Optimus robot runs into something new, or say it figures out a better way to climb those stairs, that data gets uploaded shared instantly with every other Optimus unit out there. It's like they're all learning from each other's experiences, constantly getting smarter. So one robot figures out the stairs, and instantly, every Optimus on the planet knows the trick. You got it. That's what makes this technology so groundbreaking, so potentially world-changing. Okay, so it can climb stairs. Impressive. But can it walk the dog? Because, the sources say. Well, dog walking is on the list of potential uses, according to the source along with a whole bunch of other stuff, like we're talking chores, running errands, even helping out with elder care, it's a lot. Okay, see now that's where things get really interesting and kind of blow your mind crazy. We're not just talking about robots doing tasks. This is about robots being part of our lives in a real meaningful way. It's a huge shift, no doubt. And with huge shifts come, you guessed it, a whole bunch of questions. Yeah, no kidding. Like. How much can we actually depend on this technology? The source mentioned that some of those demos, Optimus serving drinks, for example, that was actually a human controlling it remotely. So how autonomous are these robots really? That's what I want to know. Million dollar question right there. And honestly, we don't have all the answers yet. Tesla says Optimus can learn and adapt, sure. But those public demos, they're very carefully staged. I mean, it's one thing for a robot to walk across a stage, maybe even climb some stairs when everything's prepped and measured out. But the real world, it's chaos, unpredictable humans, stuff's always changing. That's a whole different ball game for a robot. So it's like we've seen the trailer, the highlight reel. 
But we haven't seen how the movie actually ends yet. Exactly. There's this one little detail in the source, though, that I think hints at what Optimus might be capable of. It's small, but important. Optimus can find its own charging station and dock itself. No human help needed. Okay, I have to admit, that's pretty slick. No more finding your robot vacuum dead under the couch because it ran out of juice halfway through cleaning. But how does that tie into the whole autonomy thing? Think about it. How annoying would it be if you constantly had to track down your robot and plug it in? Not very futuristic, right? So the fact that Optimus can handle its own energy needs, that's a step. A small step, maybe, but it's a step toward robots that can actually be self-sufficient. Like, the difference between a pet you gotta take care of all the time versus a companion that can, you know, handle itself. Yeah. Maybe even take some of the weight off your shoulders. Exactly. And speaking of taking the weight off, let's loop back to those potential uses we talked about. Yeah. Even if Optimus can only do half of what the sources suggest, we're talking about entire industries getting disrupted. Yeah, for real. Elder care, domestic work, heck, maybe even child care, though. Not sure I'm ready to hand the kids off to a robot just yet. Yeah. But think about the impact on those other fields. What happens when robots can step in and provide affordable, reliable help for families, for care families? I mean, the possibilities are huge. It would be revolutionary, especially as more and more people get older. The need for those services is just going to keep growing. But it brings up other questions, too. What happens to people's jobs? Is it ethical to have robots doing this kind of care work? And what does it even mean to be human in a world where robots are everywhere doing the things we used to do? So it's like for every exciting possibility, there's a whole other side of the coin we got to flip over and examine. 100%. That's why it's so important to be having these conversations now while this tech is still being developed. I'll be honest, it's a lot to take in. I mean, on the one hand, you've got these robots that can make our lives so much easier, give us more free time, maybe even solve some of the big problems we're facing. But then there's that other side, right? What about all the jobs this technology could replace and the ethical stuff? Like, what does it even mean for us as humans when robots can do so much of what makes us human? Yeah, it's a real catch-22. Take the whole question of jobs, for example. Some people say, don't worry, robots like Optimus will just create new jobs, better jobs. But then you've got others who are worried sick that millions of people are going to be out of work. Truck drivers, factory workers, even customer service reps all replaced by robots. Honestly, it's an argument that's been going on for ages, probably since we invented the wheel. But now, with robots that could do almost anything, it feels different, more urgent. And it goes deeper than just jobs, doesn't it? It makes you question, like, what do we even value anymore? What is work? How do we measure our own worth when robots are out there doing so much of what we used to define ourselves by? Exactly. It really forces you to confront some uncomfortable questions. If a robot's taking care of your aging parents, does that somehow make their love and support less meaningful? Or if a robot's teaching your kids, does that change your role as a parent, as an educator? No easy answers there, but we got to start thinking about this stuff now while we still have time. And it's not just Tesla working on this, is it? The source mentioned other companies are jumping into the humanoid robot game, too. Oh, yeah. This whole field is exploding right now. Mm -hmm. Tons of companies all want a piece of that robot pie. And that's a good thing, actually. Competition, it's the engine of innovation. It'll push everyone to make better robots, safer robots, more ethical robots, hopefully. But right now, Tesla seems pretty set on being the first to make this technology, you know, something everyone has. They even threw out a price tag, $20,000 to $30,000 for an Optimus. Which, considering all the tech packed into that thing, sounds crazy ambitious even for them. Ambitious is putting it mildly. I mean, can they actually pull that off? Time will tell. But if they do manage to make a robot like Optimus affordable, accessible to everyone, well, that changes everything. Imagine robots not just being this novelty, this plaything for the super rich, but an everyday tool like a smartphone or a laptop. That's wild. Okay, now I'm really starting to feel like we're living in a sci-fi movie. <laughs> it's exciting, sure, but also kind of scary to think about what it all means for us, you know, for sure. But that's what this deep dive's all about, right? Digging into the tough stuff, yeah. asking the questions that need to be asked so we can hopefully understand this future we're creating for better or for worse. Absolutely. So for everyone listening, next time you're out and about, take a look around that future we're talking about. It might be closer than you think. And hey, it might even offer to carry your groceries. Who knows? Until next time, keep those minds curious and those questions coming.